yeah, we back. Now, I just want to acknowledge the fact that Tariq Nasheed, his back is currently up against the wall, man. First things first, I want to give a shout out to Pan-Africanism Strikes Back because he been on the front line in terms of doing battle against his con artist. So effectively that Tariq Nasheed actually went to court to file a restraining order. And unfortunately for him, the judge threw it out because even she could see that he's fraudulent, that he's fake. He tried to step up in the courtroom and tried to run game. And the judge said, man, get this dude out of here, man. Restraining order denied. And before we jump into it, I just want to acknowledge the fact that last night I dropped one of the most powerful videos dissecting, breaking down, and exposing Tariq Nasheed for the low IQ con artist that he is and the false narratives that he constantly promotes on social media. Check it out, man. It's entitled, How to Get Paid Like Tariq Nasheed, History Lesson for FBA. And I'm going on record and stamping it right now. That's one of the greatest videos to ever drop in the history of black YouTube. Go check that out, man. Now, let's get back into it. Earlier today, there was a live discussion happening on Twitter. The good brother Brandon, aka Pan-Africanism Strikes Back, stepped into one of the FBA chat rooms, right? He went to go confront his supporters directly and head on, and was gonna expose Tariq live and direct. As soon as Brandon hopped into the chat room, Tariq Nasheed popped out of nowhere, man. Now keep in mind, the brother Brandon, aka Pan-Africanism Strikes Back, I'm just gonna call him Brandon, he's the one that Tariq Nasheed had attempted to file a restraining order against, but the judge threw it out and Brandon won the case. The judge told Tariq, fuck out of here. And with that court case, a lot was revealed in terms of the inner workings of the Hidden History Museum. Apart from the fact that he blatantly oversold and shamelessly underdelivered, it was revealed in court that Tariq Nasheed had no plans to even open up the museum for another year. He was going to continue receiving rental property income from the tenants that were already occupying the office space. As you can see, this is not a museum. In fact, before the space was acquired by Tariq, this was a church and a real estate office. And it was revealed in court the reason why Tariq Nasheed decided to speed up the process in terms of getting the museum open as soon as this month was because his tenants decided to go online and do a background check. And what they discovered in their findings left them with no choice but to evacuate from the space and decide to find a new office space. And to be honest, I don't blame them. As a professional, as someone operating your own business, you do not want your brand or your name attached to certain con artists and certain grifters, certain low-level hustlers, especially people who go online every day, every week, every night and constantly promote and post inflammatory information that has no accurate basis. And the reason why Tariq Nasheed decided to take Brandon to court was because the investigative journalism that Brandon was delivering against Tariq Nasheed every week, not only has it exposed the chinks in his armor, but it also lost him thousands of dollars in rental property income. And he blames the loss of income on Brandon's investigative journalism. But if you ask me, listen, your reputation speaks for itself. Nobody with any ounce of integrity would want to stand within 10 feet of you and have their business or their name attached to the bullshit you post on social media. It's just common sense. And for those of y'all who saw that classic video I dropped last night entitled How to Get Paid Like Tariq Nasheed, in the first 10 seconds, in the first 20 seconds, I had played a clip of Tariq Nasheed asking his audience to set up an automatic contribution, an automatic donation every month so they can help pay the bills of the Hidden History Museum due to the fact that Tariq Nasheed had lost his tenant. And you know, real estate in Los Angeles is not cheap. So I'm assuming he's going to need thousands of dollars to maintain operations. And that's why if you watched my video last night, Tariq Nasheed was talking about, oh, we're gonna have books for sale in the museum. I'm gonna have t-shirts for sale in the museum. I'm gonna have my DVDs for sale in the museum. I thought it was a museum. But if you ask me, it seems like this will serve as a physical location, kind of like a gift shop or kind of like a bookstore or kind of like a convenience store. And if you ask me, this place doesn't seem like it's gonna be a museum. It seems like it's gonna be a physical location for Tariq to sell his products which is fine but why would you sell a museum just say listen we're gonna open we're gonna open up a shop we're gonna open up a boutique we're gonna open up a bookstore but the most flagrant thing about this entire situation is the fact that his audience gave him over a million dollars to purchase some bullshit that didn't even measure up to anything close that he was promoting for example when you look at what he proposed this massive two-story complex that had a movie theater and a conference room and a backyard and, and, and a management room and everything in between it had like 20 different doors on it this office space that he purchased, it only has two sets of doors. But anyways, man, I'm about to jump right into it. We're going to go into the Twitter space, the discussion between Tariq and Pan-Africanism Strikes Back, a.k.a. Brandon, that occurred earlier today. And after that, I'm going to come back with my commentary. Let's go. Listen, bro, all these other people are irrelevant, so they can say whatever they want. But all right, all right, go, go ahead, Pan-Africanist. Go ahead. Go ahead. What I'm telling you is the challenge, has, the, yeah. the, challenge, the challenge has been issued. I've said... I said that I, Tariq don't even got to fight me because I know he's scared. He told the judge he's in fear of his life and that I'm going to kill him and his family. He said that. We got the documents. 
So and you can pick one of your, you can pick one of your, yeah, okay. Okay, we can, so what we can do, Tariq, Tariq, what we can do, get one of your bodyguards. Tariq literally ran up on you, dog. He literally listen ran to what, up on you. Bro, listen, 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 Tariq, you can, Tariq, you can get one of your bodyguards to fight on your behalf and we can mix it up. I don't care. The point okay, is. Okay. Okay, we got what you're saying, Pan African. We got what you're saying. All right. Um, let's let uh, Yeah, but we're not this is not an issue of manhood. That's the whole point. Uh, With this is a bitch. This nigga's a whole bitch. This thing is a whole bitch. He don't do nothing to men. This is a big fat juicy hoe ass nigga, man. That's all it is. Well, the, the challenge has been issued. Well, go though. ahead and let Connie talk. Nobody knows him. Nobody fucks with him. This nigga's clicked in with law enforcement. He was clicked in with them racist essays. Who was clicked in with law enforcement? All those dudes at that protest were clicked in with law enforcement after yelling and screaming and doing all that sucker shit. So we better understand ops when we see him, guys. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Let me say what I want to say. I'm not trying to get off the topic. Y'all know Tariq is lying about that. But anyway, the, the, listen, Tariq is. But anyway, so. Listen, look at how Tariq made that whole babbling spiel. He's just like the reverend in the movie Coming to America who had to say a bunch of shit to try to detract or try to divert people's attention from what I'm about to say. I've uncovered Tariq's scheme and he knows it. That's why he has to disrupt Twitter. Share it in that space if you can. Put it in the messaging of those people over there on that Twitter space because I know those people wanted to hear what I had to say. But man, if I tell you Tariq got in this space, right? He starts insulting me. Now, Tariq never jumps in no space that I'm in. He starts insulting me, you know, which is normal. It's par for the course. And then I said, you know what, Tariq? What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to expose to everybody exactly what you were trying to do with this whole hidden history scam. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expose it to everybody so they can know, so your followers can know what's happening. I have 500 Nashidians in one space, and I was about to expose this dude. Do you know that this dude started babbling? They, they gave him co-host on the, on the uh, space, right? This guy kept muting me. He kept trying to insult me. Tariq babbled for like 15 minutes straight on this YouTube space because he was so afraid of what I was about to say. And that made me know. That made me know that what I was about to say, that made me know two things. One, Tariq watches my channel. He watches my movement on YouTube and on Twitter because that guy invited me this morning. Soon as I got in there and started talking, all of a sudden, here come, come Tariq. So you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, this is what's going on with Tariq. Tariq got that museum, but Tariq never planned on opening up that. He got that building, but he never planned on opening the museum in that building. When Tariq bought that building and realized that there were tenants already living in the building, he thought he had copped him an income property. So what Tariq tried to do, and he tried to do it really fast, was he tried to cast doubt on his ability to open up a museum in that building safely so that he could so he could tell you guys look we're gonna move the museum somewhere else because anti-black white supremacists are vandalizing the space so your family it wouldn't be smart to put the uh artifacts in there it wouldn't be smart for us to open a museum right there these dumbass Tariq Nishidians they would have agreed to it. Yeah, that's smart. That's a smart move. That's man, that right there, yeah, that's gangster shit. Tariq is on some own code. Yeah, you can't put no artifacts in there with those anti-black white supremacists in there, uh vandalizing the building. You know, this is how they this is how they would uh bro. I had that dude babbling, dog. Straight babbling. But he wanted to he he pretended he faked vandalism on his own building so that he could take those people money, never deliver anything while retaining that income property with the church and the real estate company, right? Right? So that with them paying him rent every month. And I have the, we have the email where the lady talks about the agreement that her and Tariq made. And if, and if Tariq told her, if Tariq signed a, a lease agreement with her that didn't expire until August of next year, 2024, we know, we know that Tariq they had no intention of opening up that museum. So the vandalism, right, was to this was to 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 get the people to accept him telling him telling them that they would that he did not feel it was safe to open the museum there. But it backfired because I went up there and investigated the situation. That is why Tariq took me to court. That is why Tariq uh, got so angry at me because what I did. Now Tariq can't block him. He's got to keep his eyes. Yeah, he got to keep his eyes on him keep his eyes on me bro when i entered into that space within five minutes of me talking
talking. Tariq was in there. With a few minutes of me talking, Connie Collins was in there. They all got up in there and all started to disparage me. Oh, he's disgusted. He's a fat fuck boy. Oh, this is a op. And you know what, Gabe? And you know what made me know that Tariq was scared? He kept on saying, family, don't listen to nothing his fool got to say. Nah, man, real FBA wouldn't listen to nothing this fool got to say. I mean, y'all can listen to him if y'all want to be entertained, but no real motherfuckers going to listen to nothing this fat fuck boy got to say. Bro, when people start talking like that, where they start trying to disparage you and discredit you and trying to tell other people, don't listen to nothing you got to say, that is all con artist behavior. Of course, the con artist is going to tell you not to listen to the person who is going to tell you the truth about what he's doing. If you could have heard the way Tariq started babbling in that fucking space when I was like, all right, fuck it, because they kept talking shit, right? I said, all right, fuck it, Tariq, I'm going to just tell the truth. I'm going to just tell them what I know about what you're trying to do because I already figured out your scheme. Bro, I got five words in. Tariq realized that I I was on to him. That nigga started babbling. Oh, yo, fuck you, fat boy. You ain't nothing but a white hit mother. This is a family. Nobody should listen to this fuck boy. He's just an op. He's working with the feds and he's working with the Ooh, all the people I was working with, Lord. I'm an I'm op working with the feds, but you're able to take me to court. FBA and Adolfs started attacking Pan-Africanism, Pan-Africanism first. They started that shit. Bashing Pan-Africanism, uh, bashing Pan-Africans. And then when we started responding to them, then y'all all got in y'all feeling, oh, yo, you're attacking FBA. No, they started that shit. Anybody who is honest, any man who is a man, any woman who is a woman will tell you those motherfuckers started that shit first. And then, see, because back in the day, Pan-African people used to just sit back and take that shit. Back in the day, Pan-African people used to just sit by quietly, letting these niggas disparage Pan-Africanism, letting these niggas talk down on Garvey and shit. Now, we in this bitch giving it as good as we getting it, and they mad. Well, they're mad. It's committed, and then I could tell Tariq, hey, Tariq, go ahead and uh, produce the, the footage of these people vandalizing the building. Just like he produced the fit footage within seconds of him slapping Taharka Bay. Why? So the cameras wasn't working in? No. Tariq vandalized his own building and tried to use that as a way to try to get money out of the community. But because I went up there, that disrupted that. And so then when I went up there, the lady came out because she's a real estate agent. And she was like, oh, can I help you? Well, I knocked on the door and I just want to ask her about the vandalism. And so I talked to her about the vandalism. She gave me her car. She was like, if you want to talk to me about it any other time, just hit me up. And we can talk about it. She gave me her card, which... Who, what person who's being harassed gives you their card and says, call me anytime if you want to talk about it. I told her I was an independent journalist. I told her that I was up there just investigating the vandalism because if, if there is racially motivated vandalism occurring, then that's black people deserve to know about that and they deserve to know the truth, All period. Right. So I went, we we wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. I understand y'all daddy is up here, but y'all gotta let me finish talking. Oh, ain't nobody daddy, bro. Y'all asking a question. Go ahead, let your plan. Okay. Y'all asking, listen, y'all asking a question, I'm answering it in depth so y'all could know the reality of what's going on. Listen, I went up there just like if a racist vandalized somebody business anywhere else, the news gonna go up there and see what was up. Well, hey, it's what's going on? R racially motivated vandalism. Okay, I, so I, I went up there. Okay, all right, bro. Um, yeah, go ahead, brother Tariq. How you doing today, brother? What's up, fam? Y'all good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Sir. yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. I'm about yeah, to get my expo to... tickets. Oh, my What's man. That? My man. But, man, you see we got a lying op here. This is all this nigga does. This is a lying-ass op that has been sent to try to disrupt shit, and it ain't working. Uh, we've been documenting this fuck nigga's bullshit for about a year and a half or whatever. This dude has been sent out here to try to undermine us, and it just doesn't work. All of the arguments are in bad faith. Um, this dude has been sent to our locations. They make sure that I'm not there. Let's be very clear. All that shit about him looking for me, they went to court and admitted they never come around when I'm there. They know did not come around when I'm not around. Um, we went to court. I documented all of his basics. In court, we said it was sexual harassment, which is part of it because this nigga is a big old queen. Um, we went to court. The judge said the woman who was in, named in the case, the, the woman he's talking about, Letty, who was one of my tenants, um, they said she had to file separately because we filed jointly, and that's why they just threw it out. And this nigga was twerking his ass, talking about he won. Nigga, you didn't win anything. You were in court for damn near sexually harassing and stalking another fucking man. So we got these types of bitch niggas out here in the game running their mouths. And unfortunately, 
um, people like to Harker, they listen to dudes like this and you thought it was sweet to kind of run up on a nigga like me and you learn the hard way that it just doesn't work like that. Y'all don't listen to fucking ops like this. Don't listen to clown ass niggas who's basically an op. This is a fucking nerd. This is a big fat goofy nigga who's damn near homeless. He's fat and disheveled with a big ball spot in the back of his head. But we got to understand there's always going to be ops sent our way whenever we try to build stuff. All of these bad faith arguments, don't even take that into, don't even try to address that in a serious manner. The name of the game is to send these folks out here and to justify trying to undermine whatever we have doing. That's why all of the, the arguments are just in bad faith and is babbling in circles. That's all it is. Their job is to come out here and just lie, lie, lie and babble, clout chase and to try to undermine what we got going on. It's not working. A lot of these niggas, man, are working with law enforcement. This Bucci, this nigga has admitted that he works with law enforcement. There's videos of him saying that he's clicked in with law enforcement. And I'm not, I'm not even mad at law enforcement. If I, if I was a white supremacist in a position of power and I saw some black folks concentrating their power, if I saw black people concentrating their power, I would go get a big fat coon and have him do my dirty work too if I was a white supremacist. So I don't trip on that. Just we keep our eyes on the ball, man. Don't listen to these bad faith ass arguments and don't waste your time. The name of the game is for niggas like this to sit up and waste your damn time with Sambo Babble. This is a non-factor. Nobody takes this nigga seriously. He ain't got no um, real followers on social media. This is um, this is just another op and we have to expect that. And then to Harker Bay, that's another op too. We're, we're surrounded by a lot of these ops who come around us with these bad faith arguments. So we just got to stay focused, family. Um, and we're going to stay in a position where we're going to keep being empowered. We got a movement going on. The foundational Black American movement is a real movement, and people feel a certain way about it because we're excluding a lot of the bullshit, which is what we should have been doing. All of these niggas trying to get us to be on this pan-African vibe, that dissipates our power. We ain't got nothing from that. Ain't nobody trying to deal with us overseas. And that's the long and short of it. Let's stop fucking around. We are looking at ourselves and our lineage and building our power around our lineage. And the shit is working. We're moving the needle. We got politicians on the ropes. We're talking about real tangibles for our group. And we're not letting nobody misrepresent us no more. So all this babbling and all of that sucker shit, that's for the birds. It ain't working and it ain't going nowhere. This movement is here. This is the new normal. Now, all of this tether babble and all of this pan-African bullshit that these niggas are trying to shovel on us, if y'all want to waste your time with that, knock yourself out. Truth be told, this nigga's voice is too feminine and his stomach is too big and his hips are too fucking wide. I don't listen to niggas like that. I'm cut from another cloth. But if y'all want to listen to that shit for entertainment, knock yourself out. If you're trying to build, come on over to death row. Oh. Bro, 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 listen, li bro, listen, wait a minute, wait a minute, bro, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, let me talk, all right, man, so are we playing around, because I'm telling you what Tariq told the, I'm, t I'm telling you what Tariq told the judge, I'm not saying I said that, we, we tried to prove that Bucci Bear was about me, Tariq lied in that lady's face and said, Bucci Bear is not about him. It's, it's not a, in your likeness, right? He said it's not in your image. Bruh, right? you were not there. I'm asking. You were not said. there. You have, Brandon, we're that's not what, you. It's okay. Bro. Listen, bro, I didn't agree to talk to you, bro. So that's the whole thing. I'm talking to I'm I'm you. Know. All right. Look, uh, I'm talking to Low. I'm Let's telling you what. Low, man. Let's just, man. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time, one at a time, yo. Let's see, we're not paying everything. Dude, listen, I don't need to play with the jokes and all that. Tariq got in there and said, I, I'm getting the transcripts right now, so y'all going to know what the facts, right? Tariq got in there and said that Bucci Bear was not about me. It was just a character that his company owns. Tariq, you right here. Did you not say that? No, listen. Hold on. We're going to let Tariq respond because you just asked him a question. Let's let Tariq respond. Let's And uh, Tariq, you go ahead and respond to his question. I said the truth. We don't use Brandon's face, name, or likeness in the in the cartoon, and we don't. Bucci Bear just happens to be a bear who's moist with wide fucking hips with a bitch made voice. If he thinks that's him, that's on him. Do you think that's you, Brandon? I, I don't know. You're the one saying it's not me, so I have to go by what you say. But what I'm saying is, Tariq got in court. I'm not a liar. I don't make up lies. Y'all got in court. You were like that's me. That's me. You and your lawyer were saying that was you, nigga. In court. Listen, 
the the lawyer asked you a question about Bucci Bear. You answered the question. The judge then repeated the question to you. You answered the question. I don't, I'm not here with all the. I'm not for all the games and stuff. The all I'm saying is Tariq denied. Tariq in court did not. I'm giving you guys honesty. You know, if you guys feel like you deserve it, I'm giving it to you. If you don't and you want to play, that's cool. Tariq said, "Hold on, Tariq. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you." Honestly, though, right, did y'all snitch on Umar Johnson or not in court? Honestly, no, we did. What are you talking about? Oh, that's a good the question. You gotta, give me the give me the you got to tell me what I said about Umar Johnson. Did y'all mention Umar in court? Mm, I didn't mention Umar at all. I don't even remember us mentioning him. Stop your lawyer. Your lawyer. Uh, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did, did your lawyer? Did your lawyer do it? I, honestly, I don't remember, but if he did, he did. I don't know. Okay, okay. Anyway, on I'm, not I'm, not on, I'm not dry snitching on nobody. Man. What is there to say? What can we say? What does you putting a restraining order, trying to put a restraining order on me, have to do with Umar? I don't even understand the correlation. Y'all brought him up. Y'all threw Umar under the bus for no reason in court, nigga. What are you talking about? Oh, my nigga, God. All right, man. Look, listen. I... You flying piece of shit. Man, I don't need to lie. Tariq, why are you disrupting my chance to talk when I didn't disrupt your chance? Lying bitch ass nigga. Y'all Man, come on, man. It's obvious Tariq, it's obvious that you don't want these people to hear what I have to say for a reason. There's no other reason for you to jump in this space, bro. You in here trying to disrupt. Philip you all I'm saying is the guy's filibuster in the conversation because he don't want the reality. I did not lie. Listen, so far, everything... Your voice is listen, annoying as fuck. So far, You're a big, lying, fat fuck boy, nigga. You sitting up here lying. Y'all sat up there and threw Umar under the bus for no reason at all. Here's the thing. We have the, we're going to get the court transcripts, and I'm going to read them live on my channel, and you guys can see, and I'll, I'll send them to whoever want them. We did not bring up Umar Johnson... As a matter of fact, when you said I was throwing somebody under the bus, when you said I was throwing somebody under the bus, I thought you were saying that I was throwing Taharka Bay under the Okay. Okay. You, uh, guys. All right, man. I, I, hey, I'm going to head out, man. Y'all keep me on my mic. I'm going to head out. Hey, Y'all enjoy well, whatever you got going on. Get the fuck up out of here, you wide nip ass nigga. Look, this I is what I'm saying. Wait. This is what I'm saying. Big, yeah, big well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dizza, I want to ask him about pop locking and dropping it on that damn chain and pole. Um, yeah. <laughs> what made you pop lock and drop it and drop down and get your eagle on? What made you do that? Are you scared of Tariq? I mean, big you low, do know big low. You, big low. Hold on. You do know Where did you get all that ass? Where did you get all that ass? <laughs> big low, if you want to have a mature cop, nah, if you guys want to have a mature conversation, Damn we can do that. What's but... going on here with all that fucking ass? Double cheeked up on a right. Thursday afternoon. I see. I... No, you don't have to leave. Answer the question, though. Why did you, why did you do that? Why did you? Because he walked up on you. I mean, you you had him. You could have squared up real quick and got down because you do know. Why do you keep? Them. Why do you keep muting me? Why no, do you keep muting gonna me? Mute you, I want you to answer that. The reality, the reality here is that you guys don't want to hear the truth because it's about Tariq, okay. and that's okay, Brandon, y'all. Tell the truth you guys are welcome. Listen, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm gonna tell you the. I'm gonna tell you the truth about why I did whatever I did, but I'm not going to do that getting constantly interrupted, people muting me. I mean, y'all got Tariq's attention. Go y'all floor succeeded in what y'all wanted the to floor do. Is yours. Yours. Why you did talk. you pop that ass on the floor? Why did no, you do that? First of all, first of all, nobody ran from Tariq. Also, yes, you did. Yes, you did. ask Tariq. Yes, did. All right, yes, Tariq, did. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. So that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Tariq, why did, you bring, why did you bring bodyguards to court, bro? Latino bodyguards. Why? Why you keep putting his name the and video, his titles on YouTube? The video, so you can make money. the video. Listen, the video is there. Tariq, look. Tariq walked up to me with two Mexican bodyguards. All right, like a bitch, and you ran. All right, man. All right, you listen, Tariq. If you wanna, if you wanna have a boxing match or whatever. You look disabled, bro. You look disabled. So why would I run for you? Went to the hands. No, we could do that. We ride in LA. We could do it, bro. No, I didn't run. Man, whatever, Tariq. Tariq, you know, Tariq, Tariq, you know. Listen, you know that you. Listen, bro, you know that you ain't gonna fight nobody, bro. 
you look Nick. disabled, bro. Your leg look like it's not even attached to the rest of your body. Like you disabled, bro. Like it's okay. All right, we back now. I did not play the entire conversation, the entire Twitter space. I only played certain segments, but you kind of get the idea. In my opinion, I think that Tariq Nasheed is at a place where we just been hammering down on him so consistently, exposing the bullshit so effectively that now he's just reacting straight up emotionally, man. Straight up emotional. Also, something else that I realize is his entire group, every black man that follows Tariq Nasheed, they're just not serious. For the majority of the conversation, the reason why I didn't play the entire conversation is because it was just cafeteria level jokes lunchroom jokes you know what i mean dudes talking about dudes having wide hips and big butts and talking about you know you you a big juicy like what are you talking about what black man calls another man a juicy wide hip big butt like i don't understand it bro it's like you know and these dudes is like 40 40 years old 50 years old 60 years old like and i'm a young dude i'm not even in my 30s but just listening to these guys talk man it's just it's just embarrassing bro it's like just sit around for five minutes and listen to Tariq Nasheed talk listen to Tariq Nasheed supporters talk and you understand why black men as a collective are not taken seriously on any level and the only reason Tariq Nasheed can amass a fan base and stand out is because you realize his supporters are nothing but a bunch of mental midgets of course you seem like a giant when you're standing amongst the crowd of men who are mentally three foot tall so of course you're gonna seem like a giant when you five feet tall and that's pretty much what we got for example I would always crack a joke and I would talk about how Tariq Nasheed supporters have low IQs but I was really just joking man I was just talking my shit but listening to them talk that full conversation I think I was accurate in my assessment and the most pathetic thing of all in that entire conversation towards the beginning Tariq Nasheed spent the entire conversation cracking jokes I remember he said Brandon got wide hips he, he got juicy wide hips and five minutes later one of his supporters cracked the same exact joke bro in the same exact joke not even 500 seconds later he said the same exact joke said oh you got wide hips bro i'm telling you man i ain't never seen nothing like it man i can't relate to any of these dudes man the only person that i sought to emulate in life was my father and apart from that i venerate my ancestors but in terms of me following behind a public figure or a social media character and copying their slogans copying their phrases copying their mindset copying everything they do i just can't even relate to it bro the only men that i feel that level of veneration for are no longer alive those men have transcended to the ancestral realm. They're no longer walking the earth. There's no man on the planet that I have that level of admiration for besides my father. But when I sat back through that entire conversation, I noticed there was a, a father-son type of admiration and love between Tariq Nasheed and his supporters. And it's a sad thing to see because his supporters are grown men. They're not men in my age. They're not young boys in their early 20s that need a mentor, that need elders. These are men in their 30s, their 40s, and their 50s. And they're looking up to another grown man as an elder, as a leader, as a mentor. And when you confront them about it, they immediately deny it. They say, oh, oh, he's not my leader. Bro, these dudes get into my comment section all the time. They always got to give the disclaimer. They always got to start out the comment by letting me know that they're allegedly not a follower of Tarina Sheed. And then the entire comment is nothing but his catchphrases, nothing but his slogans and nothing but the words that he created but at the same time they'll tell you that he's not their leader bro these dudes are professional liars just like their leader they're professional con artists just like their leader they have a low iq never graduated from high school just like their leader and i'm not saying you got to graduate from high school or graduate from college to be deemed intelligent because i even talk about the fact that i dropped out in college as well but one thing we always got to remember all men are not created equal certain men are just simply more intelligent than other men and I can confidently say, without a doubt, on the side of Pan-Africanism, on our side of the game, when you compare us to those airheaded bozos on the other side of the game, you already know what it is. You already know who's more intelligent. You already know who's an idiot. And to drive that point home, I want y'all, go right now. The video I uploaded last night entitled, How to Get Paid Like Tariq Nasheed. I'm telling you right now, one of the greatest videos to drop in the history of black YouTube. If you ask me, it's a knockout punch. The type of video that could end his career. So go check that out, continue to run that up, spread that, share that, man, send it to a friend, send it to your mama, send it to everybody. Anyways, man, it's your boy Nefakar Dessaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description, and I'm gone. Peace. You ought to give Nef Nefakari T. Dessaline a listen. I listen to that brother. Yeah, shout out to Nefakari T. Dessaline. That brother's legit. That brother's legit. He always goes in on Tariq, and he does it in more of a short form way, which is good for a lot of people who don't have a long time to sit up on the internet listening and stuff. Go subscribe to that brother channel. That brother be going in on Tariq. Very concise and very like well put together uh, uh, short segments. He gives Tariq the business and debunks his FBA talking points so brilliantly and logically. Yeah, go check that brother out. Thank you, Bring Truth to Light. Yeah, Nefrakari be killing it. I like his videos. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the brother is a brilliant brother. That brother is brilliant. He be killing Tariq quick. Efficient to the point, destroying them. Facts, facts. I agree one thousand percent. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass, and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to prepare me.
business, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fought it. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit, they stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. Know they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making it ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They make a no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be chosen, I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.